Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people, teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. Shalom, Israel. I'm Officer Kim Uel, and to my left, Officer Tobias. And as you see, we are practicing social distancing in this time of COVID-19. Right. So what we want to bring to you today is marriage and family basics during COVID-19. How to stay married during the pandemic. Right. <laughs> so we're going to start off with a few scriptures. We're going to bring out first uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1. Again, this is marriage and family basics during COVID-19. We know that a lot of us now are laid off work. Um, we're spending a lot more time at home with the wife, with the family. So we're cramped together. You know what happens when we get cramped together. There, there'll be arguing, there'll be fighting. These are things that we're going to go into the scriptures and try to eliminate if you keep the commandments and stay calm, we're going to make it through this, all right? 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 through 5. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. This is a true saying. If a man desired the office of a bishop, he desired a good work. Mm -hmm. A bishop then must be blameless. The husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine, no strength, no striker, not greedy of filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous, one that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man knoweth not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? So the Bible says if a man doesn't know how to rule his own house, how is he going to be able to care for the church of God? I want you to go back up and read verse 3 again. Verse 3, not given to wine, no striker. I want to deal with that, no striker. Because again, in a time like this, we're going to be busted home, wife, husband, children. You know, a lot of us men, we're not used to taking care of the children like that. That's the, that's the duty that the Most High gave to the wife. We're at home, we're at work, and we're, we're making a living, and we're taking care of the family. You come home, you're not used to dealing with all the things that the wife deals with on a daily basis. But now, we're gonna see what the wife goes through on a daily basis, right? right? But, I want you to read that one more time. Not given to wine. Not given to wine. No striker. You know what, I, I, I'm, I'm prefacing this no striker because you know you can get easily agitated right. when you are cramped in a, in a small apartment, even in a house. When you, you know, most of us, we don't live in, in 3,500, 5,000 square foot homes. So, you know, for, for black people, uh, uh, 1,500, 1,800 square foot home is a big home. But when you think about it, that's really not that much distance if you got a wife and two or three children. So brothers, you got to keep your calm, all right? It says, no striker, go ahead. Not greedy of filthy lucre, Uh huh. but patient. Not, but patient, go ahead. Not a brawler. Not a brawler. You see how the Most High says that twice. Don't be a striker. Don't be a brawler. Sisters, don't be chest bumpers. I know you're going to get frustrated in a time like this. 
But you gotta be, you gotta remain peaceful. Read on. Not covetous. Not covetous, go ahead. One that ruleth well his own house. Uh huh. Having his children in subjection. We're gonna deal with the children a little bit later because now our children are out of school, our children are being homeschooled. It's up to us to get our children under subjection. Read on. With all gravity. Uh huh. For if a man know not how to rule, his own house, uh -huh. how shall he take care of the church of God? So for the first time, many of us, since we've been in the truth, are going to really have to put this into play. All right, so from there, let's go to Romans chapter 12, verse 10 and 11, because the Lord's work doesn't stop. Just because COVID-19, the pandemic is taking over the world, the Lord's work doesn't stop. Let's read that. Romans chapter 12, verse 10. Uh -huh. Be kindly affection one to another uh -huh. with brotherly love. Read. And honor, and honor preferring one another. Uh -huh. Not slothful in business. Read that again. Not slothful in business. We can't be slothful in the Lord's business. Read on. Fervent in spirit. Uh -huh. Serving the Lord. Serving the Lord. So now, many of us can't go out on the streets right now and continue to bring forth the gospel on the streets as we've been commanded. So how are we going to be fervent in spirit? Let's get 2 Timothy 2.15. Let's see where it starts. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Uh -huh. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Mm -hmm. A workman a that... A workman. A workman. So now that you've got time off from work, Many of us are not working as many hours if we're not laid off at all. You got time to what? Read, watch videos, go back over your notes, read on. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Uh huh. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Now we're gonna have a better opportunity to rightly divide the word of truth because we got the end of class videos. You got 15 minutes with the captains. We've got a lot of material to go back over and review. Don't be neglectful to read, brothers, all right? Let's go from there to Sirach chapter 6, verse 32. Sirach 6, verse 32. Because, brothers, we cannot be slothful in the Lord's business. This is the time for us to build ourselves up, all right? The book of Sirach, chapter 6, verse 32. Uh -huh. My son, if thou wilt, thou shalt be taught. Right. And if thou wilt apply thy mind, Thou shalt be prudent. This is the time for us to be applying our minds to the word of the uh, to the word of God. Read on. If thou love to hear, uh -huh. thou shalt receive understanding. If thou now bow down thine ear, thou shalt be wise. Mm -hmm. Stand in the multitude of elders and cleave unto him that is wise. And how are we gonna stand in the multitude of elders? Like I said, we've got a lot of classroom videos. We've got the 15 minutes with the captains. We've got a lot of material. You've got your notes. There's a lot of material for us to be able to stand in the multitude of the elders and learn, read. Be willing to hear every godly discourse mm -hmm. and let not the parables of understanding escape thee. And if thou seest a man of understanding, get thee betimes unto him. And you know what else we have? We have, we have telegrams, we have group meets. You have opportunities to ask captains ask higher officers answers to your questions. So we have, we have communication lines available for us to continue to learn. Read on. And let thy foot wear the steps of his door. Uh -huh. Let thy mind be upon the ordinances of the Lord and meditate continually in his commandments. Mm -hmm. He shall establish thine heart and give thee wisdom at thine own desire. You see that? Give thee wisdom at thine own desire. So if you're at home, and you're watching TV, or if you're at home and you're playing PlayStation, you're at home and you're doing anything else, but taking advantage of the time that the Lord has given us to get strengthened in his word, you're not gonna get that wisdom, all right? So from there, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, and let's read verse 34 and 35. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 34. Let your woman keep silence in the churches, uh -huh. for it is not permitted unto them to speak. Mm -hmm. But they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. Read. And if they will learn anything. That's the point I wanted. 
If your wives are going to learn, read, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for women to speak in the church. So if, if your wives are going to be asking you questions, they're going to be expecting you to have answers. So what does that mean, brothers? We have to study. We have to study. You are the Lord of your house, okay? You should be able to provide answers, at least basic answers to your wives. If it's something greater, that's why you have leadership that you can reach out to. But it first starts with you and as the leader of your home, brothers. Okay, from there, let's go to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 7. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, mm -hmm. giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Read that first part again. Likewise, ye husbands, uh -huh. dwell with them according to knowledge. So, it's our responsibility. And now, a lot of our excuses are gone. You're at home with your wife? The Bible says, dwell with them according to knowledge. What's the knowledge? God's commandments. We have to dwell with our wives and build them up in God's commandments, all right? So from there, let's go to Proverbs chapter 31. We're going to read verses 10 through 12. Again, what are we going over? Marriage and family basics during COVID-19. How to survive the pandemic in your marriage, all right? Proverbs chapter 31, verse 10. Uh-huh. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. Mm -hmm. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. Read on. She, she will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. See, that's where we want to get to. Right. She will do him good and not evil all the days of his life. Let's jump down to verse 23. Verse 23, her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. Why is her husband known? Because we know, you know, that brother, that brother Tobias, his wife is a wise woman. She's a virtuous woman. He must teach her at home. He must be taking advantage of COVID-19 and bringing out the scriptures with his wife. That's how you want to be known amongst the elders. Jump down to verse 20, 26. Uh, where do I want? 26. Verse 26. Uh -huh. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, mm -hmm. and in her tongue is the law of kindness. I want to deal with that for a minute. It says, in her tongue is the law of kindness. You know, a lot of our wives, as, as they repent, they still have the filth of the world. So do we. And we're, and we're working to, to uh, 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 get that filth uh, purged out of us by the word. But a lot of our wives... If they still keep in contact with ungodly family members, uh, friends outside of the truth, they won't have that law of kindness in their mouth because they still will have that filth of that pollution of the world. And now that we have time during this COVID-19 to spend more time with our wives, now you got time to actually observe your wife's daily behavior, daily actions. All right, so read that again. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, uh -huh. and in her tongue is the law of kindness. And in, the t in her tongue is the law of kindness. Read on. She looketh well to the ways of her, of her household, uh -huh. and eateth not the bread of idleness. You know why that's important? Because while you observe it, you get to see, what did your wife do all day? Because right. you know when you go to work and you come home and you be like, baby, why isn't this done? Baby, why isn't this done? What the, with the children and, and this and that and all these excuses. Now you're home with her. You get to see what she do all day. Read that again. <laughs> she looketh well to the ways of her household, uh -huh. and eateth not the bread of idleness. Read. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Uh -huh. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. All right. So from there, let's get an example of a wife that was well instructed. Let's see what the elders said about this woman that was well instructed. Not just by her father, but by her husband. Let's get the book of Judith, chapter 8. Okay, because it says that her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth amongst the elders of the land. Judah chapter 8, verse 28 and 29. The book of Judah, chapter 8, verse 28. Mm -hmm. 
Then said Ozias to her, All that all that thou hast spoken, hast thou spoken with a good heart. Uh huh. And there is none that may gainsay thy words. We can't gainsay your words. Why? Because she's speaking the words of God. That means she has to be taught the words of God. Read. For this is not the first day wherein thy wisdom is manifested. You see that? We expect to hear wisdom come from you. Read. But from the beginning of thy days, all the people have known thy understanding. Uh-huh. Because the disposition of thine heart is good. So he said that we expect to hear good things and, and wise things come from you. Even after her husband's death, even after he was deceased, she still magnified his house by her behavior. That's something for you sisters to pay attention to, all right? So from there, let's go to communication. So the first thing we, we went over is the Lord's work doesn't stop, all right? Even though we're at home and we can't go out on the streets, we still have got to build up our houses. We got to build up ourselves, brothers, and build up our wives, all right? So now let's go to communication. Let's go to Matthew chapter 5, verse 37, because this communication thing is pretty heavy. Now that you're locked up, you're bound up in the house, because that's what it feels like sometimes. You're bound together with your wife, almost like, you remember the, 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 the they have, uh, when they do the picnics, they have those little races where each person put a leg in the right. potato you know, sack or something sack, like right. that. Now you feel like that, <laughs> that you're bound to your wife during this COVID-19. All right, let's read that. Matthew chapter five, verse 37. Matthew chapter five, verse 37. But let your communication be yea, yea, nay, or nay. Okay, for, we don't. For whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. So let your communication be yea, yea, and nay, nay. For whatsoever more than these cometh of evil. You know, this is specifically right now speaking to the women. Because a lot of times our wives, they want to have the last word about something. They always want to have their voice heard. You know, like you might tell your wife, look, I need you to do this. And you expect to get it done. And she oh, well, why can't we do it this way? I didn't ask you that. I just asked you to do it. And one of the things, sisters, that y'all must come to the understanding is that when we ask something of you to be done, you're supposed to do that as if Christ asked you. Because that's our responsibility, that's our position in the household. And one of the things also that you don't consider is, you ask us that as if we haven't thought the thing, the, the whole uh, uh, problem through. Like, we don't know the different scenarios of us asking you why we want you to do a certain thing. Just do it, just do it. Read that again, just do it. But let your com communication be yay, yay, uh -huh. nay, Nay. Yes, yes, my Lord. Yes, my Lord. Because you know, I'm going to tell you something. Let y'all see, see uh, sisters in on a secret. We know when you come in and you be like, oh, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord. We know when you leave, you ain't treating him like that. All right. Most of y'all, yeah, most of y'all calling him something different as soon as you get outside the doors. All right. So listen to what Christ said one more again. But let your communication be yea. Yea. Uh huh. Nay. Nay, uh -huh. for whatsoever is more than these come up of evil. So anything else that, that is said besides that come of evil because that's when you start arguments. All right, from there, let's go to Tobit chapter 8 verse 6. Let's see, wife, why is your communication supposed to be yay, yay, and nay, nay? Let's see what role the Most High God gave the wife. Tobit chapter 8 verse 6, mm -hmm. thou madest Adam and gavest him Eve, his wife, for a helper and stay. For what? For a helper and stay. So wait a minute. If she's supposed to be a helper, that, that means that when you say, wife, I need you to do this, she's supposed to what? Help. She's supposed to help. Read that again. Thou madest Adam and gavest him Eve, uh -huh. his wife, for an helper and stay for an helper and stay okay from there let's go back to first peter chapter three we're going to read verses one through six so our wives were created for us to be a helper and a stay and during uh, uh and in this captivity you know sisters we go out and we risk our lives i'm gonna i'm gonna I'm 
ask y'all a question that I asked uh, one of the captains just recently. I said, how many of our wives, when we go out here, especially now that, the, that the, the most of the nation is shut down, they got stay at home orders in place, it just gives the police a reason to pull you over if they want to. How many of our wives take for granted that when you leave and you go to the school to perform the Sabbath duties that you're coming back home? How many of your wives wake up in the morning before you getting ready and she burn incense and send up prayers for the nation? Send up prayers that her Lord makes it home after he does the work of the Lord. How many of you doing that, sisters? Your job is to be a helper in the state. You're supposed to be reverencing us just as Christ. Read on, read that. First Peter chapter one, chapter three, verse one. Uh -huh. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, mm -hmm. that if any not any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. So you know what? Because some some of the sisters be like, uh, uh, they they'll say, well, my my husband's out of the spirit, my lord is out of the spirit, right? But it says that. If any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. That means, you know what? You don't come out of the spirit. That's what that means. You don't come out of the spirit, sister. Read on. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. Uh-huh. Whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plaiting, up, plaiting the hair. Uh-huh. And of wearing of gold or of putting on apparel. Mm -hmm. But let it be the hidden man of the heart, and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. You know what it says, and that which is not corruptible. What's not corruptible? God's spirit. So if you are operating in God's spirit, this is you. All right, but if you're not operating in God's spirit, you better apply 2 Corinthians 13 and 5. Read on. Even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. A meek and quiet spirit. Go ahead. Which is in the sight of God of great price. In the sight of God. That's a great price. That's like going back to Proverbs 31 and 10. Who can find a virtuous woman? That virtuous woman, she's applying this right here. All right. This is how that virtuous woman is going to keep her house together during the pandemic. All right. So that you get read down to verse six. Okay, Verse really? 5, for after this manner in old time, the holy woman also, who trusted in God, uh -huh. adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. Mm -hmm. Even as Sarah... You know what it says, subjection unto her own husbands. It didn't say calling leadership to, to, to referee their fights. It said being in subjection to your own husband. You, sisters, if y'all apply this scripture, you know a lot of those phone calls don't have to be made. Read, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, uh -huh. whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well, and are not afraid with any amazement. So you're a daughter of Sarah, as long as you do well. Jump down to verse 8. Verse 8, finally, be ye all of one mind, uh -huh. having compassion one of another. See, now, this is something that we got to build on. Because during this time when, when, when arguments, fights might start to creep up, we got to be compassionate one to another because you know when you've been with somebody long enough you know little trigger words right. you know what sets them off you know the little slick talk right yes, sir. the scriptures say read that again finally be ye all of one mind uh -huh. having compassion having compassion one of another uh huh Love as brethren. Read. Be pitiful. Uh huh. Be courteous. Uh huh. Not rendering evil for evil. Read. Or railing for railing. But contrary was, blessing, knowing that ye are thereunto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. Because we want the kingdom, okay? We want the kingdom, and we're not going to go into the kingdom as, as brawlers and, and fighting each other, okay? So we have to learn during this time, and I'm going to tell you something, this pandemic is going to be a beautiful thing. Because the Lord is going to prove all of us, all right? So from there, let's get an example. Let's get Tobit, chapter 2, verse 11 through 14. Let's get an example of a righteous woman and how she responded during a, t during a tough time. Tobit, chapter 2, verse 11. Uh -huh. And my wife, Anna, 
did take woman's work to do. Mm -hmm. And when she sent them home, and when she had sent them home to the owners, they paid her wages and gave her also besides a kid. Uh -huh. And when it was in my house and began to cry, I said unto her, from whence is this kid? Is it not stolen? So Tobit is accusing his wife right. of being a thief. Read. <laughs> Render it to the owners. Take it back. Go ahead. For it is not lawful to eat anything that is stolen. Uh-huh. But she replied unto me, It was given for it was given for a gift more than the wages. Uh-huh. Howbeit, I did not believe her, but bade her render it to the owners. Uh-huh. And I abat and I was abashed at her. He said I was abashed. I mean he was embarrassed. Read. But she replied up upon me, mm -hmm. Where are thine alms and thy righteous deeds? Mm -hmm. Behold, thou and all thy works are known. But you know what? A soft answer turned the way wrath. She says, I was given this bonus because of your works. Right. You're known. You have a reputation for being a good man. She didn't cuss him out and be like, Nigga, I ain't no thief. You know? Right. Sisters, you got to learn. You have to learn how to speak with kindness. The law of kindness has to be in your mouth. Okay, from there, let's get 1 Samuel chapter 25. Let's read another example of a righteous sister and how she behaved during a time of trouble and distress. All right, all we're doing is we're bringing out the scriptures again. We're bringing out marriage basics, marriage and family basics, how to survive during this pandemic, because again, we in closed quarters, and we know what happens when you in closed quarters, all right? We know that, that arguments and fights can creep up because you, you, the script, uh, what's that saying? Absence makes the heart grow fonder, mm -hmm. but familiarity breeds contempt. So when we, when we cramped up together for a long period of time, damn. Things get real. I, I gotta take a walk. Uh, I, I gotta walk down to Tobias' house. He, he, he live in another county, but I gotta take a walk. <laughs> All right, let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 25. We're gonna read verses 3 through 6. 1 Samuel chapter 25, verse 3. Now the name of the man was Nabal, and the name of his wife, Abigail. Uh huh. And she was a woman of good understanding uh -huh. and of a beautiful continence. So she was beautiful and she had wisdom. Go ahead. But the man was, was church, churchless. Churlish. Churlish and evil in his doings. He was a Negro, or he was a nig. Okay, read on. And he was of the house of Caleb. Uh huh. And David heard in the wilderness that Nabal did share his sheep. Right. And David sent out ten young men. And David said unto the young men, Get ye up to Carmel, uh -huh. and go to Nabal, and greet him in my name. Uh huh. And thus shall ye say to him that liveth in prosperity, Peace be both to thee, and peace be to thine house, and peace be unto all that thou hast. Okay, so now let's jump down to verse 17. Let me set it up. Um, Nabal was a nig, all right? And David sent his men out into the fields, and they took care of, they, they took care of, of, of Nabal and all that he had, and they kept the Philistines from coming and, and looting them and, and making war against them, all right? So he was protection. David, his men were protection for Nabal. Let's jump down to verse 17. Verse 17. Now therefore know and consider what thou wilt do. Mm -hmm. For evil is determined against our master mm -hmm. and against all his household. For he is, a, he is such a son of Belial, uh -huh. Belial that a man cannot speak to him. So they're saying, hey, you got to do something. They're coming to Abigail. You got to do something. Can't nobody even talk to this dude and let him know the danger that we in. Go ahead, read on. Then Abigail made haste and took 200 loaves and two bottles of wine and five sheep ready dressed and five measures of parched corn and a hundred clusters of raisins and 200 cakes of figs and laid them on asses. Uh -huh. And she said unto her servants, go on before me. Uh -huh. Behold, I, I come after you. But she told not her husband the ball. That says she told not her husband the ball. The Negro PM woman go cussing the ball out today, right? But she's looking out for her household. Read on. And it was so, as she rode on the ass, that she came down by the covert of the hill. And behold, David and his men came down against her, and she met them. Mm -hmm. Now David had said, Surely in vain have I kept all that, that this fellow hath in the wilderness, mm -hmm. so that nothing was missed of all that per pertained unto him. 
and he have requited me evil for good. Uh -huh. So so and more also do God unto the enemies of David. If I leave if if I leave of all that pertain to him by the morning light any that pisses against the wall. So I'm I'm destroying all the men of the house. Go ahead. And when Abigail saw David, she hasted and lifted lighted off off the ass and fell before David on her face and bowed herself to the ground mm. and fell at his feet and said upon me my lord upon me let this iniquity be so now wait a minute Nabal was the one that disrespected David right. but she said let this iniquity fall on me that's what a righteous woman does read on and let thine handmaid I pray thee speak in thine audience uh -huh. and hear the words of thine handmaid let not my lord, I pray thee, regard this man of Belial, even Nabal, for as his name is, so is Nabal, so is he. Nabal is his name, and folly is with him. Mm -hmm. But I, thine handmaid, saw not the, not the young man of my lord, whom thou didst send. Mm -hmm. Now therefore, my lord, as the lord liveth, and as thou soul liveth, seeing the lord have withholden, withholden thee from coming to shed blood, and from avenging thyself with thine own hand. And they that seek evil to my Lord be as Nabal. You see that? That's why the Bible says that she had wisdom. She was a fair countenance. This was a wise woman. She knew how to preserve her household. Let's jump down from there to verse 28. Verse 28. I pray thee, forgive the trespass of thine handmaid. Mm -hmm. For the Lord will certainly make my Lord a sure house. Because my Lord fighteth the battles of the Lord, mm -hmm. and evil have not been found in, in thee all thy days. Let's jump down to verse 35 through 38. Verse 35. So David received of her, of her hand, that which she had brought him, mm -hmm. and said unto her, Go up in peace to thine house. What did he say? Go up in peace to thine house. Uh huh. See, I have hearkened to thy voice, and have accepted thy person. Uh huh. And Abigail came to Nabal, and behold, he held a feast in his house, right. like the feast of a king. And Nabal's heart was merry within him, mm -hmm. for he was very drunken. Wherefore she told him nothing, less or more, until the morning light. Now you know, you find videos all the time on YouTube, Negro women pulling pranks, right? Pulling pranks on the husband, cussing the husband out. Now he drunk, right? This would be the perfect time for her to go and start blabbing her mouth, right? That's not what a righteous woman does, sister. Read on. And it came to pass in the morning when the wine was gone out of Nabal mm -hmm. and his wife had told him these things that his heart died within him. So after he got sobered up, you know, now she told him, you know you almost got his kill, right? Go ahead. <laughs> and he became as a stone. Uh -huh. And it came to pass about 10 days after that the Lord smote Nabal, that he died. So that is an example of 1 Peter 3 and 7, or 3 verses 1 through 7. Because what happened was, even though he was out of the spirit, what did she do? Her chaste conversation. Right. She was still in the spirit of the Most High God in Christ. All right? So now, from there, let's go to, uh, what did we just read? Oh, uh, Let's go to Titus 2 and 3. Let's go to Titus 2 and 3. So now, what do we need now even more from our wives? We need y'all to apply Titus 2. Okay, we know y'all going, y'all watch the Titus 2 classes, but we need you to actually start applying Titus 2. Let's read Titus 2, 3 through 5. Titus chapter 2, verse 3. Uh -huh. The aged woman likewise, that they be in behavior as becoming holiness, mm -hmm. not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, mm -hmm. that they may teach the young women to be sober, uh -huh. to love their husbands, to love their children, to be, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, mm -hmm. good, obedient to their own husbands. Do what? Obedient to their own husbands. Mm. That the word of God be not blasphemed. So... Blaspheming the word of God is when the wife is not obedient to her husband, huh? Right. Oh, because there's order. Matter of fact, let's get that. Let's get that. We're coming right back. 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 3. 3 only. Let's get the order. Let's see why it says obedient to their own husbands that the word of God be not blasphemed. 
1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. Mm -hmm. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Uh -huh. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of what? And the head of the woman is the man. And your head, sisters, is your Lord. Read on. And the head of Christ is God. So now let's go back and read Titus 2 and verse 5 again. Let's start at 4. 4 and 5 together. Titus 2, verse 4. That they may teach their young women. So to now, our wives in this time, in this time, teaching the young women. Now, some of you have daughters. You got young women in your homes. Some of you are leaders. We have chats. Sisters have chats just like the brothers have the chats. Now is the time for you to show your wisdom, sisters, especially during this pandemic. Read that again from the top. That they may teach the young women to be sober uh -huh. and to love their husbands, uh -huh. to love their children, Read. to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, uh -huh. that the word of God be not blasphemed. So it says to be discreet. Let's get that in uh, Sirach chapter 26, verse 13. It says to be discreet, right? And in verse 4, it says that they may teach. So they have to be apt to teach. So that means they have to sit still and learn from who? Their husbands, as we read in 1 Corinthians 14. All right, let's read that. Sirach chapter 26, verse 14. Uh huh. A silent and loving woman. No, no, no. Start at 13. Verse 13. The grace of a wife that lies her husband. Mm -hmm. And her discretion. And her what? Her discretion uh -huh. will fatten his bones. The scriptures say to be discreet. Okay, sisters, you have to be discreet. Don't be telling everybody what's going on in your house. Everybody don't need to know that. Okay, uh, read verse 14. A silent and loving woman uh -huh. is a gift of the Lord. A gift of the Lord, read. And there is nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. And that well instructed mind will teach the younger women. Let's jump down to verse 14, or uh, 24, I'm sorry. Verse 24, a dishonest woman can timid shame, mm -hmm. but an honest woman will reverence her husband. What will an honest woman do? A honest woman will reverence her husband. And you know that comes again as we read in her behavior, not just your words, not just on the Sabbath, uh, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord, but your, your chaste behavior, your uh, uh, righteous behavior is going to be known all the time. Okay, now, one of the main things uh, that we have to do also during this time, the schools are shut down. So guess what? You got your children at home. Now it's time to deprogram our children. Our children have been in Esau schools. They've been learning Esau's ways. They get, Esau get 9, 10, 11 hours a day with them. You get a couple of hours, you come home. Uh, uh, tired from work, you barely go over their homework if you do it all. Now's the time. The Lord is delivering our children back in our hands. It's time for us to deprogram our children. Let's get Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 32. It's time to get our children back, Israel. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 32. Uh-huh. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Uh-huh. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. Uh -huh. And there shall be no might in thine hand. So our sons and our daughters shall be given unto another people. Now we know this scripture goes back into slavery, but it also deals with today. Our sons and daughters, we give them willingly right. to the oppressors. Now, all praises to the Most High. We're establishing uh, homeschooling like Jacob's hope. But now I caution you. Don't sit back and wait on Jacob's hope to come into play so that now your children are learning at Jacob's hope and you still don't have any more to do with their education than you did when you sent them to the white man. All right, it's time for us to be proactive and start taking back our children, all right? From there, let's go to Deuteronomy 7 and 6. How are we gonna build up their self-esteem? We read this all the time in camp, but it's time for us to start applying these scriptures and, and strengthen ourselves as a nation. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. Mm -hmm. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. Uh -huh. The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special 
people unto himself. Mm -hmm. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Now we know our kids ain't hearing that at school. Right. Our children are not hearing that in the public school system. We have to deprogram them and start to build them up in God's commandments. From there, let's go to Ephesians 6, chapter 1 through 4. I'm sorry, chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. Ephesians 6, 1 through 4. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, mm -hmm. for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. It says that's the first commandment with promise. What's that promise? Long life. Read. That it may be well with thee, mm -hmm. and thou mayest live, live long on the earth. Uh -huh. and, ye, and ye, and ye fathers, uh -huh. provoke not your children to wrath. The wrath of God. Read on. But bring them up in the nurture and ad admonition of the Lord. We've got to raise our children up in the fear of the Most High God. Okay? The God of Israel. Alright? So now from there, let's go to Sirach chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. We're almost done, Israel. We're almost done, but we just... We felt it necessary to bring out these basics. We can't take for granted that everybody's studying. We, we can't take for granted that... If we don't come out with classes like this, that y'all not going to be mad beating the heck out of each other. Right. All right? So let's read this. Sirach 3, chapter 1, verse, I mean, chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. Sirach chapter 3, verse 1. Hear me, your father, O children, and do thereafter that ye may be saved. Mm -hmm. For the Lord have given the father honor over the children. Wait a minute. Read that again. For the Lord have given the father honor over the children. No, he gave it to the mother. Over the truth, the Lord has given the father honor over the children. That means you fathers, you got to step up and you got to know what's going on with your children, okay? That's part of ruling your house well. Read on. And have confirmed the authority of the mother over the son. And that authority is only confirmed because the father is in the house, okay? We read when, when we go, to, we don't have to go there, but um, Isaiah 3 and 12, we read that all the time. Single mother households, the scriptures say, they which lead thee cause thee to err. So that authority is given to you because of that man in the house, sisters. All right, from there, let's go to fighting. Okay, let's go to Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17. Hey, hey, we've been saying this over and over again. This is not the time for us to be fighting each other and acting like nigs, all right? You like that? I like I like that word. Nigs. We ain't going to be acting like nigs during this COVID-19. All right, family? All right, let's read that. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17. Uh-huh. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Read. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. Uh-huh. And not suffer sin upon him. So we're supposed to correct our neighbors and not suffer sin upon them. Read on. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. Uh-huh. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Uh -huh. I am the Lord. So when it says that thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart, is that, is, is that excluding the wives? Like, why is he reading that? That ain't got nothing to do with the wife, right? Let's get 1 Peter 3 and 8. Let's see. Let's see if this scripture fits marriage. Okay? 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. Mm -hmm. Finally, be ye all of one mind, mm -hmm. having compassion one of another. Uh -huh. Love as brother. Love as who? Love as brother. So we are supposed to have the same type of love towards our wives as you got to the brothers. Now, don't get silly, all right? This is not going into sex for you. The, some of you tune in to these videos, you want to get simple. Right. But just like we got brothers in the world that, that, that we would give our lives for. You got brothers in the truth that you would give your life for. It said we have to love our wives as we love the brethren. Read. Be pitiful. Uh huh. Be courteous. Be courteous one to another. Read. Not rendering evil for evil. Uh huh. Or railing for railing. Okay. So now let's get some examples of that. Let's get Job chapter two verse nine and ten because a lot of times fights occur when the Lord corrects his wife. Now, now she she still got she still got that unrepentant mind. Right. Like, <coughs> I got to have the last word. Right. Sisters. Remember Proverbs 31. Y'all love to quote it. 
but it's time to apply it. All right, let's read that. Job chapter 2, verse 9. Uh -huh. Then said his wife unto him, uh -huh. Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Uh -huh. Curse God and die. You know, we in this COVID-19. Nigga, you just lost your job. I'm sorry. Nick, you just lost your job. Right. right? What we gonna do? The rents do. We gonna lose our car. What we gonna do? Just curse God and die. Read that again. Then said his, said his wife unto him, uh -huh. Dost thou still retain thine integrity? So she's asking, Do you still trust in the most high? Read. Curse God and die. You see what the foolish woman said. Right. Go ahead, read on. But he said unto her, uh -huh. Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. You see that? He had to correct her. He had to correct her. Read on. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? Uh -huh. And shall we not receive evil? Mm. So. Job had to correct his wife because she's losing faith. He had to correct her in her speech. Let's get another example. Genesis chapter 30, verse 1 and 2. Yes, we're going back. We're going to go back to our forefathers. The Bible says things written aforetime were written for our learners. So let's go and see these things that were written for us to learn from. Genesis chapter 30, verse 1. Uh -huh. And when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, uh -huh. Rachel envied her sister uh -huh. and said unto Jacob, Give me children or else I die. Mm. And Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel. Uh -huh. And he said, Am I, God, am I in God's stead, uh -huh. who have withheld from thee the fruit of thy womb? So he had to correct her. Look, right. it's my fault you ain't getting pregnant? Now, when you go back and you read that history, you see, hey, he didn't have no problem getting the woman pregnant now. So she said, give me children or else I die. Like, she's blaming him for it. He had to correct her, all right? He had to correct her speech because, what, she got emotional. That's why it said, when it says for us to dwell with our wives, they are the weaker vessel. We know y'all the weaker vessel. So, brothers, brothers, you got to be patient. Now that you're home with the wife, that railing for railing thing, we gotta be patient with our wives too, all right? But, never give up your authority in the house, brothers, all right? Now, let's go from there. Uh, back to Leviticus, read 19 and 18. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt avenge, thou shalt not avenge, nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. So now, let's deal with grudges. Let's see one of the ways that the Negro Pian woman, not the repentant sisters that's watching this video, but the Negro Pian woman bears grudges. Let's get 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 3. Let's see one of the ways that they bear grudges. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 3. Uh -huh. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence. And likewise also the wife unto the husband. And likewise also the wife unto the husband. Go ahead. The wife have not power of her own body, uh -huh. but the husband. Uh -huh. And likewise also the husband have not power of his own body, uh -huh. but the wife. Right. Defraud ye not one the other, uh -huh. except it be with consent for a time, that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer, and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your incontinence. That Satan tempt you not because you holding a grudge, because your husband corrected you, and now you don't want to give him none. That's how you sisters get down sometimes. You call your mama, you call your wicked cousin, your wicked sister. I tell you what I do, girl, I wouldn't give you none. Don't listen to her. Don't listen to her, okay? And brothers, don't you be, the, because look, why you ain't do the dishes? Where my food? I ain't giving you none. Don't do that, brothers. That's wicked too. All right? All right. All right. We got to work through these problems during this pandemic, all right? We, the Most High has brought us back into close quarters, and we have to learn each other. Remember the Bible said we're supposed to prove each other. Some of us, we got married before the truth. We didn't prove our wives. Now he's making us prove them. You didn't prove your husband. Now he's making you prove them, okay? We got to grow and we got to come out of this together and stronger, all right? So now from there, get um, Sirach 26 and 5. We almost done, Israel. We are almost done. I know y'all saying, 
Officer bringing out a lot on us, but we almost done. All right. Sirach chapter 26, verse 5. Uh -huh. There be three things that my heart feared. Uh -huh. And for the fourth, I was so afraid. Mm -hmm. The slander of a city. Uh -huh. The gathering together of an unruly multitude. Uh -huh. And a false accusation. And a what? A false accusation. Freedom. All these are worse than death. So that's another way you bear grudges. You know what? I know how to get him back. I'm going to call leadership. Mm. I'm going to call leadership and I'm going to tell him what. I'm, I'm going to make up a story. I'm going to get him in trouble. That's bearing grudges. Don't do that. And that's letting people in your household. Okay? The husband is the lord of his house. We're not the lords of his house. So wives, you got to submit yourselves unto your husbands and everything. So now, last thing. Let's, we about to wrap it up. Uh, make your Lord want you. That's a big thing. Make your Lord want you. Okay? Let's get Judah chapter 10, verse 3 and 4. Judah chapter 10, verse 3 and 4. Make your Lord want you. Okay? Judah chapter 10 verse 3 uh -huh. and pulled off the sackcloth which he had which she had on uh -huh. and put off the garments of her widowhood uh -huh. and washed her body all over with water uh -huh. and so, so now, what's the Bible say sisters don't just be laying around the house all day just because your husband ain't gone out to work anything get up and wash your behind okay read on <laughs> and anointed herself with precious ointment uh -huh. and braided the hair of her head do your hair sisters do your hair don't be sitting there uh at COVID-19 go another three months with that same hairdo that you got doing all of this okay do your hair sisters Read on. And put on a tire upon it. Uh huh. And put off her garments of gladness. Uh huh. And put on her garments of gladness. And put Go on ahead. her garments of gladness. Uh huh. Wherewith she has she has clad during the life of Manasseh, Manasseh, her husband. You can still dress up for your Lord. All right, you can still make him want you. You know what? From there, let's go because I know we 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 cut uh, short on time. Sirach 30. 15 and 16. Sirach 30, 15 and 16. Sirach chapter 30, verse 15. Health and good estate of body are above all gold, uh -huh. and a strong body above infinite wealth. Mm -hmm. There is no riches above a sound body, mm -hmm. and no joy above the joy of the heart. So, during this pandemic, we are allowed to go out and exercise. Okay, you can practice social distancing, but you can still go out, take a walk, take a jog, still exercise, keep your body good, all right? Let's go to Sirach 31 and 16. Sirach chapter 31, verse 16. Mm -hmm. Eat as becometh a man uh -huh. those things which are set before thee, uh -huh. and devour not, lest thou be hated. Don't get all depressed because your husband, your Lord is there all day, and you no know, separation, you're having arguments, and now you're just going to eat. You're just going to sit there and just start filling up on all the, the things y'all stocked up on, all right? And you know what? If you can't make it to the grocery store, you're running down to the little corner gas station and getting all the little snacks and the bonbons and all of that. All right, don't do that, sisters. All right, don't do that. Read on. And don't do that, brothers, either. All right, don't do that thing. Read. Leave off first for a man to say, uh -huh. and be not unsatiable, lest thou, lest thou be, lest thou offend. So don't be scarfing down all the food. Your, your Lord going to be offended. He's going to be like, Damn, this how you be eating when I... Damn, no wonder the food bill's so high. Read. <laughs> when thou sittest among many, reach not thine hand out first of all. Uh -huh. A very little is sufficient for a man well nurtured. Uh -huh. And he fetcheth not his wind, his wind short upon his bed. You know what that's telling us during this time of the pandemic? We need to be fasting. Okay, don't just wait till the end of the month fast. We need to be fasting and praying that the Lord protects us all. Pray for your leadership. Pray one for another. All right, last scripture. Let's get Sirach chapter 33, verse 19. Now, this is for you brothers, because we've been going over a lot of scriptures about how we're going to maintain in this pandemic, in this COVID-19, how we're going to come out of it on the other side stronger. All right, read this. Sirach chapter 33, verse 19. Uh -huh. Give not thy son and wife Thy brother and friend, power over thee while thou livest, mm -hmm. and give not thy goods to another. 
least it repent thee, and thou entreat for, for the same again. Uh -huh. As long as thou livest and hast breath in thee, uh -huh. give not thyself over to any. For better it is that thy children should seek to thee, than thou, than thou shouldest stand to thy, their courtesy. Uh -huh. In all thy works, keep to thyself the preeminence. Keep to thyself what? Keep to thyself the preeminence. You are the Lord of your house. Read. Leave not a stain in thine honor. So, we bought out a lot of scriptures about how we're going to make it through. Uh, this has been Marriage and Family Basics. During COVID-19, we pray you've been edified. And with that, we say shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. I, you, I, see, we deliver the truth.